Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at the tier 10 in the new Japanese light cruiser line. And I believe the term light cruiser has a certain uh, fissure meaning in this case. Because that thing is absolutely massive. That is the Yodo. Uh, yeah, light cruiser my, my butt. <laughs> That, that is an absolute monstrosity of a ship. That said, um, they have also gone with the uh, with Fisher's idea of who needs armor anyway, but let's put all the guns on a ship because that thing has a lot of guns. <laughs> okay, let's begin by doing a couple of comparisons. And we'll start out with, if that loads, there we go, comparing her to the Zhao the tier 10 heavy cruiser for obvious reasons. Now traditionally the delineation between light and heavy cruiser is not having much to do with the armor but with the caliber of the guns and in that regard yes this is a light cruiser but it is a honking massive one. The Yodo gets a defensive AA3 which doubles uh, which gives you a 200% increase on the small caliber AA and a 100% increase on the large caliber AA. She's also the first ship in this line that gets a sonar. Not just a single charge, but it is there and it gives her a limited viability to be used against destroyers. The Zhao, on the other hand, does get a defensive AA, but it's only a def AA1. In return, she gets the precise aiming skill and obviously has, uh, has a legendary module that can be equipped. The Yodo has uh, more hit points than the Zhao, which is relatively welcome given that is a honking massive ship. Uh, she doesn't have it, she doesn't have a good uh, maneuverability and this has been the theme with the uh, Japanese light cruisers. They're actually handling worse than the heavy cruisers. So the Zhao beats her hands down in terms of maneuverability. The guns, this is where it gets really funky. Because these are the hypothetical 150 millimeters uh, fifth year guns. They apparently have a 60 cal uh, caliber bar barrel length, which doesn't really help with the dispersion because the dispersion is dreadful on these things. But uh, and she almost has the same reload as as the Zal, but she actually has the edge in range <laughs> over the Zal, and. Uh, Again, given that the armor piercing on Japanese heavy cruisers isn't particularly great, and Japanese cruisers in general isn't particularly great, uh, the high explosive is actually pretty good on the Yodo to be used uh, in comparison to the 203s on the Zhao, even though the Zhao has two turrets less. The torpedoes. Uh, now, again, in, in line with the Japanese uh, light cruiser line, the Yodo, to Yodo's torpedoes actually do more damage. Although uh, in terms of reload, it's a little reversed here. So while the Zhao is capable of outputting 20 torpedoes, <laughs> uh, she does have a 78 second reload, which is quite long. Uh, whereas the Yodos only get six, only get 16, but they do reload. Uh, they do reload a little bit quicker. And, of, and also have a significantly better flooding chance, but a bit shorter range. Still, 9.6 kilometers is nothing to sneeze at. The AA, while on the Zhao, sort of okay-ish. Uh, on the Yodo, especially with the defensive AA up, is actually pretty decent. The more problematic part here is the range, specifically on the small caliber AA. Uh, it's a bit on the short side, which again does not make her a support cruiser. Concealment-wise, she's worse off than the Zhao. That, however, leaves another comparison that I would like to check, and that's against the Smolensk, because one thing that this thing is good at is setting fires on battleships, <laughs> because there the dispersion doesn't matter that much, especially if they give you broadside, because it's, it's mostly the uh, horizontal dispersion that is really, really bad. So comparing her to the Smolensk, uh, just, just in terms of the guns, Obviously, we have a larger caliber. We have better range than the Smolensk, and we obviously have um, we obviously have uh, uh, more of them. But uh, the Smolensk has half the reload, 
So I would still say the Smolensk is the superior HE spammer, but then again, it's the Smolensk. So <laughs> uh, that, that is to be expected. Now, this is a honking bag, a honking big cruiser. <laughs> this thing is it's even, it's even larger than a Zao. Uh, I mean, heck, this thing, is, this thing is almost as big as a Yoshino. <laughs> and that's a, basically a battle cruiser. So, uh, in fact, let's add, the, let's add the Yoshino here just for interest and see how, how she compares in terms of man maneuverability, because that's something I haven't actually checked. Yeah, the, the Yoshino is a bit better still. Um, not, my, not by much, but um, her rudder turns a bit faster. But then uh, she has, the, uh, she has this, uh, the weaker engines and the actual traverse is a little bit lower. So I would say she's comparable to the Yoshino. In terms of uh, in terms of maneuverability, so you'd think, okay, you've got a relatively squishy battle cruiser, uh, yeah, a light cruiser, the size of a battle cruiser, <laughs> with lots and lots of guns and the maneuverability of a TI-8 battleship. Um, what gives? Well, there's something special about the Yodo, and you don't necessarily realize that, and until until you see her in battle, uh, I'm actually going to show you. Uh, let's go quickly into the training room, and uh, I'll just just so I can demonstrate that uh, that to you, because uh, th that sort of changes a little bit how um, how you can or how you can play her in certain situations. While well, we're waiting for that, so uh, please uh, put your eyes on the gun turrets, uh, specifically the first five. Yes, the first five gun turrets. So the three, four, the forward triplets and the um, uh, the X and Y turret. Uh, look, look how they're turning. Do you see that? The first five turrets are 360 degrees turrets, which means that you can swing the first five turrets around from one side to the other in uh, comparatively little time because <laughs> there there you go you see that I mean, it's not a greatest turret traverse the last turret is not 360 that one needs to go the long way around but if you need to play bow in now bow in she only gets two turrets on target which is a bit meager but if um, if you give a little bit of an angle you suddenly get um, well almost all of them on target just by having them turn around the other side there you go so uh, that's uh, that's something to keep in mind. Actually, while we're here, uh, let me show you the other thing. Um, torpedo angles, yeah. <laughs> Forward angles, non-existent. It's all in the rear here. So you have like a like a Miyoko or Takao level of torpedo angles on this thing, uh, which is a bit of a problem because if you're giving broadside to anything, then uh, then you are in trouble. Now, fortunately, these guns have very, very high arcs, and I mean in really high arcs. Uh, these guns are, these guns have really nice gun arcs that allow you to sit behind pretty large islands and shoot across them. And that is sort of the direction that the Yodo is going as well. Now, I, I did mention that in my initial tech tree talk that these are not support cruisers, and and I'm standing by that. I think after playing this thing in tier ten, these are not support cruisers. These almost play the same way as the uh, Japanese heavy cruisers. They are extreme range torpedo spammers and HE spammers, and they are very good at that. Uh, this one has the benefit of uh, has the benefit of an AA that's actually usable. So this thing, this thing does not have bad AA. She can take down a fair amount of, of planes. She cannot defend herself against a full-blown carrier strike all on her own. But if you are with the team, and again, these guns have a these guns have a 13 kilometer range. If you stay with the team, or, or uh, are in in positions where you can overlap AA with other ships. <clears throat> then you definitely have a decent amount of chance to, to you know, do something. Anyway, let's start looking at the setup, shall we? So you get the choice between uh, speed and AA damage and main battery reload. I think they're both vi viable choices. Uh, it's, it's certainly nice to have more speed and a little bit on a little bit more large caliber AA is not nothing to sneeze at. Whereas a 3% reload is decent because you can't really run the reload mod in this thing. Because the 
the dispersion on these guns is um, not good. It's especially the vertical disper uh, dispersion is pretty bad. So uh, against bowing targets, you have you you're not going to get an awful lot of shots on target. So I am actually and you don't get the precise aiming module. So I am actually running the um, dispersion module here in the first slot rather than reload. And other than that, yes, you could try to compensate for the atrocious uh, for the atrocious maneuverability. But then again, um, just focus on the things that she's good at. If you play her similar to to the heavy cruisers as a a pure DPS ship, um, not so much as a support cruiser, then you are actually going to be more rewarded, which means the propulsion mod and the concealment system are pretty are pretty useful in that regard, which gets us to a workable 13, 14 second time to full speed and an under eight kilometer uh, dis uh, concealment, which for a ship that size is actually not bad. The historical camo, and uh, there, there are, well, the historical camo is very plain uh, green. Uh, this is sort of a Japanese green tone that you, you'd normally more find on planes, I believe. But uh, it gives range, which is good, torpedo range, which is good, max traverse speed, which is actually good, and surface detection, which is pretty good as well. So this is not a terrible choice. I, I would have taken uh, gun dispersion over torpedo range, but uh, or maybe even max traverse, because the traverse isn't that great to begin with. So 4% uh, dispersion would have been preferred. There is also the Dawn Harmony camo, which looks pretty decent, actually. And uh, but it's only cosmetic, so the only uh, that's the only difference here. Other than that, uh, they do exactly the same thing. So this is a purely cosmetic choice that you have. All right, uh, commander skill. So I've I've played to I've played with uh, uh, in two setups. So the uh, one with the legendary commander, as you can see here, and one with the standard commander. We'll look at both in a minute, but. Um, Using uh, using uh, Togo here allows us a very, very important skill, and that is the Sixth Sense skill, because that skill allows you to know when you're being targeted, and it allows you to react before you see the shells incoming. It severely helps with the playability of the ship, uh, similar to any other poor maneuverability massive cruiser thing, in that you have you are forewarned sufficiently when you're being targeted. Uh, one thing that I'm actually not certain about is if that works if the... I'll have to test that. If that works if the enemy doesn't lock on but uses manual aim. I, it might not, actually, because the game has no way of knowing that you're being targeted. So I would expe expect this not to work if, if an enemy uses manual aim. But then again, um, the ship is so big and uh, <laughs> you don't need to hit the, the deck in order to penetrate with battleships. Uh, he also has the Survivalist Plus for for additional hit points restore, which is good because you have actually a really large hit point pool. Uh, we're not going to make making use of the Marksman skill, but we are definitely making use of the IFAG Plus because while these are only 150s, they actually have a decent penetration as well. So they will do a decent amount of damage. And you've got a lot of them. And then obviously we've got the Giant Hunter Plus as well, which is a good skill. But... Uh, on the regular commander, and I'm just gonna just gonna move him over here. Uh, in so in in the first game, I have played sort of with a with a heal build. I'm using the air defense expert here, which I'm not using on Togo, unfortunately, because that collides with the six sense skill. But the six sense skill is arguably more useful. We do have the battlefield support, which gives you an extra def AA and an extra sonar, which is nice. And uh, other than that, it's it's pretty much the same setup. So, uh, yes, the 150s, yes, IFAG Plus isn't going to make a huge amount of difference, but unless you're fighting at point-blank range, the armor piercing isn't that great. I have managed to get uh, citadels on cruisers by hitting the deck armor with the armor piercing at point-blank, but if you're fighting at point-blank, just torpedo them, you know? So And at long ranges, the armor piercing doesn't do an awful lot. So... Uh, and the high explosive is almost as good. So I would generally just stick with the high explosive. And I've used actually the... Uh, and with Togo having the IFAG plus skill, um, that does make sense. So anything else? And yes, the consumables, obviously, I would use once regular and once premium consumables. So 
let's get into two games and um, again sort of showing the what the ship can do and what the ship can't do with also with the two separate setups but also with two different play styles let's go the first round is with the regular setup and we are playing domination on aurora against uh, taiho double yamato double booster a seyong and a gearing is it seyong or sejong i think it's seyong i'll have to look that up as well uh top tier obviously being tier 10 and off we go so what i'm going to try what i'm trying here is still play a little bit more on the sort of support role if if possible and uh, this was one of the earlier battles i've been playing where i was still testing the ship and uh, trying to really figure out what it was all about but uh, like I said, similar to a Japanese heavy cruiser, you actually are more of a damage dealer, really. You're not you're not so much of of a support ship, and in order for do, for in order to in order to do that, especially against maneuverable ships, you need to get uncomfortably close. That said, I can still give some AA support, for example, to that Kiev over there. So these guys are coming. We we see the carrier strike coming in. So I'm heading over towards the island, which a gives me a bit of. Uh, a bit of shielding and b uh, there is uh, there's the enemy carrier coming in and the carrier is going for the kiev so i'm going to get the defensive a up and see that i can at least defeat um, at least defeat some of the torpedo strikes before they come in but this is about as far forward as i want to go now there's a wooster and uh, yes the kiev has actually noticed that the carrier is striking him and is has is not been sailing forward in a straight line well done kiev now, obviously, the Kiev has a booster problem, uh, which means that's something I can help with. And there's also the uh, Seyong over there, which uh, obviously has torpedoes up. So while we are defeating, <laughs> well, we've shot 10 planes down already but at this point, while we're defeating the carrier strike, uh, we are obviously trying to keep the, to push the uh, the Wooster and that, uh, that scout cruiser out of there. And while she doesn't have the greatest maneuverability, she has enough maneuverability to dodge torpedoes once if, you, if you've got uh, this much of a warning. And yeah, I've got friendly Wooster here, so he's got the Hydra running, which means uh, we know exactly where the torpedoes are coming from. Yes, I've seen those. Thank you very much. Now I can run my own Hydra because he should be on cooldown. And I'm now starting to take battleship fire, which means uh, given that these guys are not inside the capture circle, I'm just waiting for the Kiev to pass by, and then I am going to just drop some area denial torpedoes in there, just in case these guys do not decide that they want to come in, and then again have fun with the aircraft carrier, who is still trying to, to his credit, kill the Kiev. And yes, there's the pair of uh, Seyong and Worcester. Seyong's probably got the torpedoes reloaded, and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Wooster obviously being an issue, but at that long range, yes, he can set a couple of fires, but he's not a huge issue towards the Kiev, and we have helped quite a bit with uh, deterring the carrier from taking out our our destroyer. So in in that regard, in these kind of situations, you can play this role. Now I'm, I'm bucking up here because I have been coming under fire from pretty much everybody, and I would like to recover some hit points first. There is a low health gearing, but there's also a Yamato in my range and uh, sitting broadside on in the capture circle, coming under air attack. This is where synergy comes into play. So single fire, Instadamacon on a single fire, which means I can now park myself behind that island here and be reasonably safe from incoming Yamato fire. I'm not sure if he can lob that. There is another Yamato out there who's obviously also shooting at me because it's a new ship, you know, everyone's keen to, to sink the new ship. But um, uh, I, can, I can definitely lob shots over that island. And uh, we've taken out the Yamato over there, while still keeping the Worcester and uh, and that Pan-Asian cruiser out um, from being combat effective. Although the Pan-Asian cruiser is now back, probably has torpedoes away and is now trying to set a fire. Plus there's also a Yamato coming, so I need to make myself scarce at this point. I'm running out of hit points. Uh, there comes the carrier as well. Uh, and there's still a gearing out there, although as, tempted, as tempting as it is to say you've got 24 guns, you should be able to just nuke destroyers out of the water. The problem is you can't get the buggers on target unless they are at point blank. At point blank range, yes, but at this range, uh, let's see what we can what we can achieve against a destroyer sailing in a straight line. That would be nope. 
And does dispersion say anything? I, I've fired two salvos of 24 shells at that thing. And, it w and the Taiho ends up having to take him out because I just can't hit him. Uh, Yamato. Yamato is a much better target because it's big, it doesn't move very fast, and there I can start getting some shells on target. Even though it's still not an awful lot, but uh, yeah, the dispersion is, like I said, um, can, can be can be yeah can, can can be awkward at these long ranges, which makes positional play around islands much so much more important. So let's see if we can get a fire on that thing. But uh, it looks like we have more juicy targets. Oh, oh no, never mind. The sea almost dead. And we are controlling. We are controlling one capture circle. The enemy is controlling one capture circle. No one's bothered going over to C cap. There is an enemy cruiser, however, over in C. So I'm gonna see if I can help out a little bit over here. Yep, it's a Worcester, but uh, he's sitting broadside on to uh, basically a Hindenburg, so he's dead. And uh, that leaves that other Worcester over there, and there's still a Yamato left. But so far we haven't really. And here I'm doing a misplay. I'm actually. Uh, I didn't realize that these were fighters. I thought this was an incoming airstrike. This is if you're if you're a little busy in the battle. But now, yep, there comes that Yamato again. He really wants me dead. So now I can uh, do a little bit of air defense again, um, helping out the Kiev. Unfortunately, I used I wrongly used my uh, defensive A here, so I don't get don't get quite to do it. But uh, Worcester doesn't have the greatest dispersion in the world either at this range, and. Um, I can, again, give a little bit of air support to the Kiev. Problem is that Yamato over there. And obviously the Worcester is now turning away. Yep, there comes the Yamato again. Ow. <laughs> Which means I do need to angle this way. And as you can see, if a ship, even just a cruiser, is maneuvering, actively maneuvering, uh, your shells are going to land everywhere except for on target. I don't think I'm going to get torpedoes away at that Taiho anymore. But... Uh, Maybe I can use the bow in sort of open water position a little bit to survive a little bit longer against the Yamato. And yeah, he actually didn't manage to, to sink me there. But against... Uh, yes. Against battleships in open water, you, your advice... Uh, the best advice I could give you would... Uh, don't be there. <laughs> Another tire is going to take me out because uh, there's no way that that airstrike is... No, no, actually, the next one is going to take me out or the Yamato. Because, uh, yeah, I'm dead. But uh, I have shot 20 planes down. Haven't done an awful lot of damage. But as you can see, as long as you're focusing on the on the DPS role, rather than uh, the, you know, deter des destroyers or so, sort of role, then uh, things work re reasonably well. You can set fires, you can shoot a couple of planes down. But uh, don't, uh, don't try to chase after small maneuverable targets with those guns. So uh, while the Yamato survives, it's uh, it's still a victory for us. And uh, yeah, sometimes if you're playing this kind of role and you're just playing defensive, you're not doing an awful lot of damage. In order for that to happen, you really need to have uh, you really need to get the torpedoes on target, and you need to actually aim at battleships and get uh, get some shells on target as well, and use positional play, which is what we're going to be doing in the next round. Because here we are in an all-out tier 10 game, fighting Malta, Yamato, Shigishima, Venezia, uh, Black Shima, Gearing, and Regular Shima on the infamous fault line, yes. <laughs> Everybody's favorite map. Well, you see, in, in this case, it's actually not that bad, because I have a very good range on this ship, and uh, I have very good gun, gun arcs on this ship. So despite the fact that my maneuverability is actually really poor, I can still make myself quite useful literally by sitting behind islands. So, we only have one, actually it's not full on tier 10, because that's a, uh, that was a Prince Ruprecht, I believe. So, uh, we are going to give, them, give him some AA cover, just in case the, the carrier comes around to this direction, but it looks like the carrier is targeting the other side. So, uh, I will head over towards left flank and see if these if anything comes down there that needs help. Now remember, you may have <laughs> you may have an insane amount of guns, but you're not necessarily a destroyer hunter. You have neither you have some utility with the sonar. Uh, the bigger problem is that you just can't hit the buggers unless you are in a range at which you can't maneuver successfully to evade any kind of torpedoes. So uh, hunting things like Shimakazas is actually quite dangerous in the ship. Anyway, 
uh, we're making ourselves useful. One Shima goes center, the other Shima is scouting the flank, uh, or if it was a Shima, and has found a gearing. And we will see if there's anything we can do about it. Uh, we haven't been spotted yet, so I'm just using the torpedo indicators to see where he's, ca he's going. And uh, now we can give him some fire support. Hello, Mr. Gearing. And yeah, that, that just took almost half the ship off. So if, if I can do this one more, one more time, then uh, that is a very dead gearing. But now I need to slow down. I'm already running the hydro because there are going to be gearing torpedoes coming through that gap. And he's wisely uh, diverted himself behind. Yep, there he is. Uh, behind that island. And now I'm also coming under carrier attack. So I do need to double fire. Gonna Damacon using the first heal. And I'm now not being actively targeted. So I know that I'm relatively certain. Uh, I'm relatively safe from things like the Shikishima. And uh, we'll just uh, make sure that we're not taking any floods. But the Damacon is still active. One more torp. Can we dodge? Yes, we can dodge. <laughs> And the gearing has not t decided to make use of the situation and come around. So um, while he's busy on the flank, I might just drop some torpedoes in his general direction. And then again, y you have the choice here, right? Are you going to hunt after that destroyer and be relatively ineffective for the rest uh, f for the rest of the uh, the round? But I have been targeted there for a second, and uh, we are one destroyer down at this point. So. So one of ours went all the way through the middle, so that thing's probably going to be dying as well. Which means uh, I'm now going to do what this ship is born to do. I'm going to park it behind an island and start unloading at big, <laughs> big battleships, which are giving me broadside. Hello, Mr. Shikishima, because the carrier is also targeting the Shiki, so... Um, yep. <laughs> Ploink, uh, lots of shells in the air. And we will see what we can get done in terms of fires and floods and yeah just park behind the island as you can see you get uh, you get to shoot over it and while i'm not going undetected i'm also okay now i'm being targeted so that's either the shikishima who's getting annoyed now i'm no longer targeted okay so they've switched targets again uh good to know i'll just keep keep going and uh just keep unloading at the thing and now he's on double fire, and that looks like it's perma fire. Make that a triple perma fire, and that's literally again while, while I'm spotted, it's not a huge issue because no one's targeting me, and that's where the legendary captain comes in really, really helpful. Uh, however, the right flank doesn't look good. Uh, there are two enemy destroyers out there. Uh, that destroyer that was in the enemy capture circle for some reason is still alive, but right now I'm trying to farm a Shikishima, which is sort of more what I'm suitable for. And it'd be helpful if the friendly carrier was, was going to take care of the destroyers, but, you know, uh, doesn't always happen. There is a, I believe it's a Yamato in front of me, and I am now being targeted by something, so I'm going to make myself scarce. Yep, that's a Yamato. And the carrier is more interested in farming than uh, in farming battleships than dealing with destroyers. All right, so, uh, torpedoes out, and I'm actually going to use one of my Def AAs here to help with... Um, to help shooting those fighters down and clear and clear the carrier here while kiting away from the uh, Shikishima and the Venezia. Uh, the Yamato is already dead, I've got torpedoes in the water, but uh, our destroyer on the eastern flank desperately calls for the ca for carrier support um, because there is a destroyer. We've managed to kill the Yamato. Yep, there's the, sh uh, there's the Shimakaza. And to his credit, the carrier gets him spotted. Uh, the problem, again, obviously being that um, so I'm, I'm just... Uh, I, I am just uh, no notifying the team that, yes, I'm on it. The problem, again, being that I am not a destroyer hunter. My sonar is up, but there are no Shimakaza torpedoes in the water just yet. And the carrier, to his credit, now is actually starting to engage the Shima. And I'm doing what I can here. I'm going to put some uh, some area denial torpedoes to get the, the Shima to not come up close to the carrier. Carrier, you might want to move. There's probably Shima drops in the water. And, yeah, there you can see... If I can hit the darn thing, I'm going to do a lot of damage. The problem is I can't <laughs> because, because of this Persian. So uh, there come the inevitable Shima Torps. They didn't need, didn't need a, a, an active sonar. And the carrier is moving, but I think at this point uh, might be a little late. Uh, so we'll see if the carrier survives. But uh, again, I, as you can see, against destroyers at range, I am completely ineffective. So... Uh, I can prob I, I will have to again unfortunately uh, uh, unfortunately change my my focus here and help out with the other side because there is still a Shikishima, a Venezia and a lot of other things over there. So 
No one's targeting me. Uh, I'm just gonna... Nope, no, someone is targeting me, so turn away, turn away. Could be the Shimakaza. I know that he's still here. And uh, the problem, again, is that the carrier is completely ignoring the Shimakaze and is farming the battleships in this... And... Uh, yeah. This is not helpful. Uh, I've got my defensive AA up, so we are, we are shooting a bunch of planes down. And I'm trying to somewhat shield the carrier here from the incoming airstrikes. But there's the Shimakaze right in front of me, so... Um, I do need to now switch targets while shooting more and more planes down. But uh, yeah, I think our friendly carrier is going to go down. Uh, he is trying to avoid the torpedoes, but he doesn't have a chance to avoid that second strike, I think. So uh, yeah, just parking some fighters over it would have been helpful or just, you know, trying to take it down. But um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, we've lost our carrier and there's another torpedo strike coming in. I, I can take a, a couple of them. And this is sort of the range where my, if the Shimakaze gives me a nice broadside, if he's not actively dodging, where well, my guns become effective, but uh, unfortunately, yeah. Even though I've done a, a respectable, close to hundred thousand points of damage, uh, it wasn't quite enough. So, uh, is this is this a good ship? I think if you like ships like the Zhao, then yes, absolutely. It it has its it it has an interesting kind of slant to it and it's interesting aspect to it in that you can really utilize those those high gun arcs and get across the islands and positional gameplay is key because of also the torpedo ranges are uh, the torpedo angles are terrible uh, the torpedoes hit really really hard so if you can get them on target you can do cr stupid amounts of damage and uh, the guns against battleships are effective against destroyers. You need to be close in, which is a dangerous game to play because you have the maneuverability of, um, I don't know, like a, like a monarch or something. So you do need to be a little careful against destroyers. You are, you are not a support cruiser. For that role, the ship is really not suited. Uh, and... It's, it's really more of an HE spammer, long-range HE spammer. If you're in a battleship, and you see one of those things, be aware that it's got a 13 kilometer range and can shoot over relatively tall islands. So just be careful because uh, the HE spam is going to be real. Don't damage on single fires. Try to get out of positions and just don't sit on broadside because the dispersion doesn't really allow, uh, allow too many shells on target. So uh, is, it, is it worth grinding the line? Um, depends what you want. So if you like, say, like I said, if you like the heavy Japanese heavy cruisers and the play style, then you're going to be pretty much right at home at it. Uh, if, you, if, you were look, if you were like me looking for an alternative to the American light cruisers in a full on support role, it, that is not what this is. So, um, yeah, there you go. And that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.